Every day, we use goods and services that can only be manufactured by using substances that are sometimes hazardous. Let us just think, for example, of the companies that produce or use chemical substances for the industrial processes, of the substances used to produce the many goods of our everyday lives, of the chemical products needed to clean our houses, to the fuels needed to run our cars, to cook with or heat our houses, to the products used in agriculture. So that we do not have to go without these goods in our everyday lives, it is essential to transport a wide variety of goods daily on our roads, including hazardous goods. The transportation of goods, therefore, takes on a key role in our modern society. Industrial companies use the road network to transport goods and, because of its flexibility and ability to integrate almost all the other types of transportation by sea, rail and air, they need the road sector to offer more complete services. Our roads are used to transport a wide variety of hazardous goods. A substantially large amount of hydrocarbons, such as highly inflammable petrol, diesel and GPL, are transported. Although a lower quantity as a percentage poisonous, corrosive, environmentally unfriendly and explosive goods are also transported. Recent studies indicate that the transportation of hazardous goods is not seen as dangerous per se, in as much as the regulations in force render this type of transportation very safe. The probability of accidents occurring with vehicles transporting hazardous goods is therefore very low. But vehicles transporting hazardous goods need special care when using the road network. If this type of vehicle is involved in an accident, it can have very serious consequences for road users and the immediate environment. Statistics confirm that accidents take place both in urban and non-urban areas and that the substances involved can be of various kinds. In the event of an accident involving hazardous materials, the consequences are not limited only to the health of the people involved, but can also extend to the environment in a significant way. An accident involving a vehicle transporting hazardous goods can potentially cause serious damage to things, people, fauna and flora, as well as contaminating the air, water, soil and subsoil and damage infrastructures. Depending on the hazardous goods involved in an accident, one or more additional risks follow on from it. For instance, the capsizing of a tanker transporting inflammable substances and the consequent breaking up of the tank can cause a fire that will involve the area in the immediate vicinity of the accident. We are speaking about primary damage. The effects of this can extend to the rest of the carriageway and the surrounding location. The secondary damage amplifies the consequences of the accident. Add to all this the fact that the substance can also have poisonous, corrosive or environmentally unfriendly properties. Secondary collateral damage can affect a potentially very large area of impact. Road accidents involving hazardous goods therefore present specific features. The considerable impact of the effects compared to the low probability of it happening, the unpredictability and uncertainty of being able to determine place, time and consequences of accidents, the lack of information on the flows of transportation of hazardous goods and the events associated with them. Damage linked to an accident involving the transportation of hazardous goods determines the cost for our society. First of all, the cost involved in the loss of human life or the physical injuries of passengers on the vehicles involved and in the damage area. These costs can be protected in time with material, biological damage and the need for moral support for those directly involved and for family members of the victims. Also, the restoration of the area environmentally damaged can turn out to be a laborious and complex activity with significant costs for the community. Additional costs can come from the damage caused to the road infrastructure, road service, the unimpaired state of a flyover, a bridge or a tunnel. 
and the surrounding buildings and infrastructures, public and residential buildings, electricity or gas networks or telecommunications, water mains, drainage system and purifiers that can potentially take a long time to restore. The consequences in terms of congestion compared to the normal flow of traffic can also be considerable and can degenerate into a complete stop of traffic or the impossibility of one way of communication, sometimes threatening for a long time, not only the normal movement of people, but also the very supply of essential goods for everyday life. The safety of the transportation of hazardous goods is therefore closely interrelated to the safety of transportation in general. It is possible to achieve better safety for the transportation of hazardous goods by working on various fronts. Improving preventative safety, that is, by adopting measures to reduce the probability of accidents by analyzing the risks, by taking care of the road network, planning, and choice of the best routes and training drivers. Increasing active safety in order to avoid accidents happening by using monitoring systems in real-time traffic, by communicating with and supporting drivers during the journey. Finally, improving passive safety, that is, by optimizing management of the emergency. It is essential that the system of responding to emergencies is always ready to deal effectively with accidents involving hazardous substances. First of all, the sequence of the various aspects of the rescue is based on the availability of an efficient system to manage emergency calls, able to promptly activate the emergency teams most suitable to deal with the emergency. In addition, it is essential to have the appropriate equipment that has to be constantly maintained by the rescue services in order to keep it efficient and always ready for use. Training of drivers to transport hazardous goods and training rescuers in techniques and tactics of various actions, as well as how to use the equipment, are the essential links of an efficient rescue sequence. Furthermore, implementing these drills has the objective of bringing it to the attention of the authorities and the public. The ADR, acronym for European Agreement Concerning the International Carriage of Dangerous Goods by Road, constitutes the agreement related to the international transportation of hazardous goods on European roads. The ADR regulates aspects related to the classification, labeling, features of the containers and vehicles, shipping procedures and transportation using various means and the training and conduct of drivers. The objective of the regulation is to ensure that hazardous goods are transported safely and in appropriate manner. Vehicles that transport hazardous goods must be provided with an orange color warning sign. In the upper half, the so-called camera code identifies the hazard. In the lower half, the UN number identifies the type of substance transported. The warning rectangle must measure 40 by 30 centimeters with numbers 10 centimeters high. Background is orange. The sign must always be fixed on the front and rear of the vehicle. The camera code is made up of two or three figures. When the hazard can be adequately specified by a single figure, this is followed by a zero. Doubling the figure specifies an intensification of the corresponding hazard. The letter X in front of the hazard code specifies that the substance reacts violently in any close contact with water. In addition to the information on the containers and packaging, additional notices are provided indicating the specific hazards in the event of an accident. Each of us could suddenly be exposed to a serious hazard. Firefighters, emergency services and other rescue organizations are available to members of the public in order to guarantee their everyday safety and in the event of any significant occurrence. These organizations, however, cannot always intervene at the same time everywhere. 
In some circumstances, it may take some time for the rescue services to arrive. Time is the key. Just a few minutes can be decisive for saving human life or preserving material assets. These are vital minutes when we each have to rely solely on our own efforts. Correct conduct in such situations means taking action for self-preservation. If you know that the accident involves hazardous goods, it is essential you inform the emergency number so that they can activate the appropriate rescue team. Remember to give the alarm by calling the emergency numbers. The number 112 is the emergency number for all the European Union. You can call this emergency number with your mobile phone, even without a SIM card. You must specify the following when calling the emergency number. Who is calling, what has happened, where it happened, the current situation. If you're outdoors near the location of the accident, you should immediately move away and wait for the arrival of the rescue team. In any case, you should not approach a vehicle involved in an accident that you know carries hazardous goods. Abstrain from smoking and using anything that can produce sparks, lighters, matches, candles, or switching on electrical appliances. In the case of accidents with hazardous substances, the best shelter is to be found indoors. You should bear in mind that toxic gases disseminate like air. In serious cases, you must prevent the gas infiltrating residential homes by closing doors and windows and switching off ventilation systems. It is advisable to protect your mouth and nose with a wet cloth. In any event, follow closely the instructions of the authorities or rescue teams. Keep yourself and anyone with you, elderly, children or invalids, calm. Following this brief and simple advice will contribute to your safety and support the work of the rescue services.